If I ask you what is the biggest solution to the future of the automobile industry, what would your answer be? I'm guessing a lot of you might be thinking of electric vehicles. Well, what if I tell you you can make it even better with vehicles that run on air? Yes, folks, you heard that correctly. I am talking about compressed air. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the all-new compressed air engine to disrupt the car market. I know you all must be wondering, how can a car run on air? And how will it disrupt the car market? Well, stick around till the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve into the various intricacies surrounding the automobile industry. So without further ado, let us begin. I know, I know, a lot of you might be confused. I mean, seriously, how can a car run on air? Well, you would be surprised to know that this revolutionary concept is actually quite old, dating back to the early 19th century. And while it might be old now, something tells me it is poised to make a comeback and revolutionize how we perceive energy-efficient transportation. But before we talk about its origins, let me give you all a rundown of how compressed air technology works. As the name suggests, rather than using fossil fuels or lithium-powered batteries, this technology involves the use of compressed air as its primary energy source. While this may sound fairly straightforward, trust me, it is quite complex, and it also offers a lot of advantages in terms of sustainability, efficiency, and operational safety. So let me explain. For starters, let me talk about air. Well, isn't it sustainable? We have unlimited access to air. We can do as much as we want. This really makes it a superior option when compared to fossil fuels. On the other hand, we have efficiency. While lithium-powered batteries might seem like the solution to the automobile industry, they are not that efficient. Nor can they hold power for longer distances and need constant charging. Compressed air-based engines, as you will soon find out, are far more efficient, especially when it comes to output. According to various reports, compressed air has a far more efficient yield when it comes to fossil fuels and batteries. And lastly, we have operational safety. I mean, this one is pretty obvious. Fossil fuels are highly flammable, and batteries can leak or burn, causing a hazard. Air, well, does nothing of the sort, making it far safer. Just imagine an engine that is better than all other technology, and while doing that, also is environmentally friendly. Now, if that is not a game changer, I don't know what is. Well, enough about the advantages compressed air engines stand to have. Let us talk about their origins. The earliest attempts to use compressed air for power were made in the late 18th century by French engineer George Medhurst. The safety benefits over internal combustion engines were especially strong in mining and tunnel construction. But practical uses didn't start to appear until the middle of the 19th century. But that is not all. Did you know that historically compressed air vehicles had small applications in industry like mining and tunnel construction? They were not meant to be the ideal choice at the time, but since there were a lot of safety hazard concerns over explosions with conventional engines, it was quite risky. Hence, the birth of such air-compressed based engines. However, recent advancements in storage technology and energy efficiency have reignited interest in this age-old concept. I know you all must be wondering if this concept was so old, why wasn't it used before? That way, we could have avoided the whole shift to EV cars, which, as you all must have heard, is turning out to be a big fail. Well, the conventional technology we talked about was quite underdeveloped and was, in fact, considered a less efficient source of energy. Recently, breakthroughs such as near-isothermal storage have really catapulted air-compressed engines ahead of their time, and according to various reports, could soon be seen in automobiles. In fact, forget the near-isothermal story. Did you know that in the present era, scientists from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, such as Riza Al-Azad Everett and Abraham Dinser, 
are breaking new ground in the field of compressed air vehicle technology? At the Clean Energy Research Laboratory, they have worked to improve compressed air systems' energy efficiency to levels that are on par with lithium-ion electric cars. They have also investigated the viability of incorporating phase change materials for heat recovery. Trust me, they will surely make amazing strides in this comparatively brand new field. All right, let us now get back to the topic at hand. We were talking about the near isothermal storage. For those who are wondering, near isothermal storage is a process that maximizes energy efficiency by maintaining stable temperatures during compression and expansion cycles. This has been a real game changer for the rapid rise of air compressed engines. There have been other major advancements too, such as utilizing phase change materials, such as paraffin to achieve impressive gains in energy density. These advancements have allowed the technology to be ready for mass production and might even rival the performance metrics of lithium ion batteries in terms of weight and volume efficiency. Amazing, isn't it? But the amazing advantages of this new technology do not end there. Just imagine that air has next to no weight, right? Well, imagine how much it will help to reduce the weight of cars. While this might seem like not that big a thing, trust me, it has a lot of impact. Imagine the amount of fuel you will conserve, since now you will be hauling less weight. In competitive motorsports such as F1, where weight is highly influential, we can use air compressed engines to again lower the weight. This will again increase speeds. I was not kidding when I said this might be the future of fuel consumption. The advantages are limitless. But that is just the start of the story. Ever wondered why electric cars were not a success? Well, it was mostly due to the fact that we needed a well-defined refueling network, or recharging in this case so the consumers could do it easily without any hassle. For that to happen, extensive investment was needed to adapt to this refueling infrastructure. Well, according to various reports, compressed air refueling stations can integrate seamlessly into existing fueling networks with minimal investment. So basically, the biggest reason behind the downfall of electric cars in recent years just became the biggest selling point for air-compressed engine-based cars. You never know, they might become the next big thing in the automotive industry. However, while it may seem like it is the perfect solution, it is not as easy as it seems. Despite the promising future for these compressed air engine-based cars, a lot of challenges remain. For example, we have the issue of regulatory frameworks infrastructure development, and consumer acceptance right from the start, which are critical factors influencing the adoption curve of compressed air vehicles globally. However, a big boost for this industry is the lack of consumer acceptance of EVs. So you never know, people might quickly shift over to this technology. Still though, while it may have an advantage and might actually spread quickly compared to the lack of response for EVs, a lot of practical challenges remain. The biggest ones among these are regulatory frameworks governing vehicle emissions and safety standards, as well as consumer perceptions regarding performance and reliability. While they might be somewhat environmentally friendly when you compare them to traditional combustion engines, they are not as good as EVs. This might pose a big issue for the future since the main factor behind this so-called shift towards a new automobile engine is environmental degradation. To be very honest, addressing these challenges requires a concerted effort from industry stakeholders, policymakers, and research institutions to establish a supportive ecosystem for compressed air technology adoption. In the end, I would just like to say that compressed air engines are a game-changing invention in the search for environmentally friendly transportation options. Sure, while they may not be as environmentally friendly as compared to EVs, they still are a good jump from combustion engines. In fact, they can also be used as a transitory engine, as the world adjusts towards EVs. That being said, right now, anything can happen to the automobile industry. 
We just have to wait and watch for what works out for us. You never know, in the end, compressed air-based engines might prevail.